Welcome back, Daydreamers, to the Japan Trip Wrap-Up Series. This on this episode, we're going to be talking about Sensoji Temple. It's a Buddhist temple. Uh, Asakusa. And uh, going to look at uh, the Shibuya Crossing, which is a scramble crosswalk uh, in central Tokyo. Uh, then, we're going to give you the Fuji wrap-up in this episode. <laughs> So I caught my first train of the day pretty early. Rainy this morning. Waiting on my first train. Seven o'clock. Then I head to uh, Shibuya, which is uh, it's the, the the home of the uh, the big scramble crossing. It's a, it, is, it is a very large crossing in, um, in central Tokyo, and uh, it, it's, it's quite impressive because you can just kind of go whichever way you want to go uh, to get across to wherever you need to be. Uh, I think I mentioned um, uh, uh, Hachiko um, being in Shinjuku, but I misspoke in the last episode, and it was actually m near Shibuya uh, Crossing. So uh, I stopped at the Starbucks that's there. It's actually kind of a famous Starbucks if you're into Starbucks coffee and and things like that. And I uh, I had the obligatory, you know, uh, uh, Starbucks coffee shot. Um, and uh, what I had there was actually a lemon cream latte uh, that was specific to summer in Japan. So that was kind of good. Um, it, was a, it was a nice sweet treat. It got me kind of sugared and caffeined up for the day. Uh, then I made my way over to Asakusa. Uh, and it's, it's kind of spelled like Asakusa, but uh, they pronounce it like Asakusa. And um, I went to Sinsoji Temple. Very cool. Very big. Fujin and Raijin, the Guardians. It was so. It was it, it was it was so I don't know moving to be there, uh, and I don't know if it was because this was one of the first temples that I had visited on this trip, or if um, it was it was the mere size and my unfamiliarity to to that kind of uh, that kind of you know place and and that kind of uh, experience. But it was it was really 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 cool and a lot of people who have seen um you know tourist photos or uh just things from japan you're, you'll probably recognize that lantern and that scene um it is quite popular and there was a lot of people there um so it kind of proved that it was more of a tourist destination uh outside of the temple leading up to it there's long lines of streets of vendors and and uh shops and um and, and all sorts of things that kind of lead up to it. Uh, some of them are traditional stall shops. Other ones are uh, a little more on the touristy side. And some really neat statues uh, letting people know that there's no more uh, motor vehicles past certain points. And then even up on the buildings and everything, um, there's just these, these, these statues of like old time uh, Japanese people in uh, yukata, um, and uh, you know, very samurai-looking uh, kind of thing with the the whole top knot hairdo and that kind of stuff. At least as a Westerner, it looked very samurai-y. Uh, I'm sure that's just um, yeah, you know some sort of traditional or normal dress or depiction for someone that's from Japan. I also got to see uh, mixed in the the kind of garden areas, and they had more uh, statues 
of uh, Buddhas and uh, just little little like altars and things like that. They had the streams running through with koi in it. So I got some video of those guys swimming around and they were really cool. I then visited some of the shops and stalls that led up to the temple. I kind of skipped them in the beginning because a lot of people were stopping there before moving on. And that's where I found the most delicious experiences of the trip. First up, Taco Yakaturi. This is uh, octopus yakitori. The lady uh, grilled it fresh and dunked it in some sauce. It's pretty cool. Try it. Yep. Uh, that's next level delicious ladies and gentlemen for real delicious y'all then one of the things that really i'll never ever forget in my life um it was one of the best things that i tasted on this whole trip and that's that's saying a, a lot um it was uh mochi wrapped red bean paste filled fresh strawberries this is uh, strawberries with uh, mochi on the outside and a red bean sweet on the inside. I guess I got two of them because I'm a fat ass and they looked freaking delicious. Let's see how this bad boy is. That's like the best damn thing I've ever had in my life. Oh, my mouth is watering just thinking about them now. Oh, I wish I had something like that here, and 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 really, I I don't I don't think that that is really obtainable even in the states. Um, put it like this: I have never had mochi until I had it like real traditional mochi, not not prepackaged real traditional mochi until that moment. And I have also never had a strawberry that was so juicy. It like, it reminded me of like peach level juiciness. It was just ridiculous. I saw some people in some traditional kimonos. Um, these were not geishas. This is, these were tourists really um and it could have been from um you know local japanese tourists coming to there um it could have been you know people from outside of the country uh, but these are not actual geisha they're just they're just people dressed in kimono there's all kind of little rental shops there it's really neat i moved on to akihabara and akihabara is a place where it's kind of otaku paradise. If it's something that has to do with electronics or anime, that's where you're gonna find it. Uh, I proceeded to Yodobashi Camera Akiba, and that is one of the largest electronic stores like e ever. I've never seen that much technology on sale in one building in my life. Uh, one of the floors actually did have a lot of Bandai models and Gunpla models and things like that. And it even had a big statue that was lit uh, of uh, one of the Pacific Rim robots. And uh, I think it was the Gypsy Danger one, but again, I always get those mixed up. So the following day, uh, I kind of... Uh stayed around my Airbnb. I did some laundry. Um, I, uh, I ate uh, onigiri from the local kombini. 
and tried out some kind of day in the life stuff, um, as well as planned out my trip to Mount Fuji. Of course, I spent all this time uh, planning and, and, and trying to make this trip happen, but I needed to plan out my actual timetable and bus schedule for getting out there. Um, there is a train, but the bus actually is a, a straight shot there and it's quicker. So I got to looking at the times that they leave and the times they get back. Um, now, I speculated based on some other things I had seen um, that I could get out to the mountain around uh, 8 in the morning and then get one of the last trains home uh, probably around maybe 6 or 7 that evening around dusk. Um, uh, 8 in the morning being kind of a latest that I wanted to be there. So... That would leave me at just under 12 hours. Now, normally it's uh, 12 hours being a max and probably 10 to 11 hours being when I was going to be there. Normally it takes about 8 hours to climb to the summit and about four, 3 to 4 hours to come down. That leaves me that, that same 11-ish hour window if I really, really push myself to summit Mount Fuji. The bus schedule did not have my needs in mind. So the soonest that I could get to the fifth station, which is where the trail starts, the one of the most popular trails to Summit Fuji, was just after 10 o'clock. Um, it was uh, disappointing. So I say, okay, if I have to get there that late, maybe I can descend and come home a little later. Well, that didn't work out real great either. The last bus leaving Fuji, Subaru Station, was 5 o'clock. So disappointing. So disappointing. So what I had to do was I had to go and basically turn 7.5 hours into, or no, 6.5 hours, really, um, into a get-as-far-as-I-could-get-on-the-mountain run. Just uh, just made it to uh, the station where the bus drops you off and you get started with uh, Mount Fuji. That bus was tiny and the uh, very, very teeny tiny little old lady that sat next to me made fun of how large I was being cramped in the seat with her friends and the comparison of how she had plenty of room and I did not. And that was pretty funny to me. I've got to do it in record-breaking like six hours so I can get back down the mountain in time to uh, catch my bus for the last bus of the day. We'll see how far I get. Um, elevation is a real concern at some point and I am not in the best shape. Kill me. I'm gonna die. Uh, but I thought, you know, I, I'm, I'm from near the Smoky Mountains. I've, I've hiked a lot of places um, around here just through my life. And even as uh, stationary as my lifestyle tends to be anymore, um, I, I've never had a problem with any of the hikes that I've ever been on. Um, and uh, so I, I really went through this with confidence, but also a little wily of what I was going to get into on the mountain. Uh, after all, there's a lot of volcanic rock. It is a still active volcano, and I've never climbed anything quite like that before. It was also eerily beautiful because of the, uh, the mist and being kind of in the clouds that surround Fujisan. Um, you know, there, there was some, some lush vegetation that was kind of poking out of, of, of weird spots and these tiny little white flowers that uh, were covered in dew that were just, to me, they were gorgeous and I, I, don't, I can't explain why. After about two, maybe a little more, maybe two and a half kilometers in, um, then it, things start getting tough. It's mostly... Uh, volcanic rock that's crushed down into gravel and dirt um, and you're, you're just doing switchbacks all the way up. Um, then you come to a couple of huts and at those huts 
um, and huts are, are basically just stations. People um, during season actually live on the mountain, um, and uh, you know their their money comes from tourism. Uh, it is a uh, world heritage site, but uh, their money there comes from tourism. They will provide uh, drinks and food and snacks. They will let you rest at their hut, uh, even overnight uh, at some of the huts and. Uh, most of that's for a fee. Uh, the toilets then are, that they have there are for a fee. There is no plumbing. Everything has to be pack muled up and down, um, and uh, you know everything has to be you know taken out with bulldozer or whatever. Like like everything's carried up or carried back. There is no real trash cans. There is there like it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy uh, that it's so isolated. Um, but it starts to make more sense the farther I got up. Um, at each of these stations or huts, you could also, if you bought a walking stick like I did, I just uh, finished a pretty great little pork bun and um, got a little energy and my stick, and so I'm about to start this up. Uh, you could also have one of the people brand your walking stick stamp it with a hot iron brand um that was that was pretty cool Arigato. By the time I had gotten up uh, to the second hut, I think, um, the trail drastically changed. I mean, the incline, the scope of like what, what the ground was made out of, which is essentially just volcanic rock, uh, craggy, uh, very hard to climb. Uh, my, my walking stick, my Fuji stick that I got, I was <laughs> so happy to have it because it... it it was necessary. Otherwise, I would have been on all floor, all fours, trying to climb up some of this area. Um, and it, I mean, it, it reminded me more of a, a beginner mountaineering um, kind of level. Not necessarily rock climbing, but like beginning mountaineering um, and less hiking. The farther I got up. in there. I don't know if you can see it through the mist, but there it is. It'll be the next stopping point. Whew. Might be the last one. Uh, it was steep. It was wet. It was treacherous. Um, and uh, I slipped a couple of times, and it, it was extremely scary. Um, most of the slipping came when I came down. Um, but as I started climbing up to these uh, these different huts that became a little closer together, it took the same amount of time to get to them because of how dangerous and how rocky the actual path was. It, there was no longer any gravel. It was pure, jagged rock formation. And, um, and it was all black rock, which is essentially you're climbing lava flow from who knows how long ago. Uh, there's a, uh, a rope line kind of showing you 
the way. And uh, every once in a while, there will be a, a spray-painted arrow on one of the larger rock faces to show you you should go this way, not this way. Um, and uh, just small guides like that. Of course, tour groups and people that have a physical guide there can show them the easiest and the best way to traverse this tough terrain. But I didn't have that. I kind of had to guess and maybe follow, you know, just whoever was on the trail. And there were a lot of other people on the trail that I could kind of, you know, take a look at how they climbed a certain area and then try to tackle it myself. Um, it, it got pretty tough. So after getting to a couple of these spots uh, at my time frame where I wanted to, I wanted to go ahead and start heading back down and catch my bus, um, I went ahead and pushed over to one last hut. And um, that was the uh, the most steep and uh, some of the, the, the most jagged and hard to traverse rock formations that I had there uh, at that point. Um, based on the picture at the last hut, it looks like I made it almost halfway up the trail to the summit. My stick and the brands that I managed to get on my stick, um, you know, at these different huts and that I, I earned them, uh, and I earned them because the only way to get those brands on your stick is to actually climb up to those huts and have them stamped on the way. Like you had to be there to get it. So, um, you know, based on the stamps on my stick that I had earned, um, I was guessing that I was about a little over halfway. Um, that's just, you know, guessing based on those stamps and, and how many all the way up that I had gotten. Um, so uh, I'm going to say that I made it about halfway up the trail to the summit. At that point, I went ahead and head back down. All right, that's it. I, uh, I'm at my time limit. I'm sure I'm going to get down to the bottom of the mountain and realize I had more time to climb up, but I really can't miss my bus because it's the last bus leaving, and I've got to check out at 10 a.m. tomorrow. There's no chance if I happen to catch the first bus out tomorrow that I'll make it. Bad, bad, bad news. <sighs> it's been fun heading down. Um, uh, again, I, I slipped a lot more coming down. Uh, the stick saved my life one time because I was going down, and I was going down hard and fast. And some people were actually leaning out of the way and putting their arms out to see if they could catch me because they saw me coming down too. And I managed to um, secure the stick in a rock formation and stop myself. Um, it was very scary. Um, but again, this is this is one of those life experiences that that even though I didn't summit, oh my god, it, it, it's just it blows my mind that I was able to do this thing because this was this was the closest that I think I've ever had to a true blue adventure, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting into the wild, as it were. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a very spoiled uh, Western person with my AC and uh, fast food and, uh, you know, my sit-down office job. And, you know, I, I get to be lazy in my life, and I'm very thankful for that. But I also have a craving for a bit of adventure, and this definitely did it for me. I had to be back to catch my bus, the last bus back to Tokyo at 5. I got to the bus stop eight minutes early. It was so close. So close. Oh my God, it was so close. Um, but, I mean, I was, I was exhausted on the bus home. And uh, made it back to uh, the JR station there in Tokyo. And then, uh, you know, caught some subway lines back to my Airbnb. And proceeded to die. That's a little rundown of, you know, my next few days there in Tokyo and trying to climb Mount Fuji. Uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't summit, but I did climb Mount Fuji. And I am very proud of myself and my accomplishment, uh, even though uh, I didn't leave enough time. Because 
mainly even though I didn't accomplish what I set out to with the summit, I was at a point where I am fully confident if given another chance to go up and stay at the huts um, overnight and continue to climb uh, and basically turning the Fuji trip into two days like I originally planned to do um, and then I, it didn't work out for this trip. I could only allot one day for it. Um, I, I, I can summit it. And, and, and just knowing that I have that capability, um, it, it's a great feeling. So yet again, if you liked this content and you want to see more, please like this video and subscribe. And if you want to see videos that are coming after this and want to keep up with the Gunpla videos that I'm going to put out um, after this series is complete, uh, hit the notification bell. That's going to allow you to be notified every time I make a new video and load it to YouTube, and then you can keep up with that new stuff. So for everybody out there who dreams about doing something, maybe you're dreaming and daydreaming about a little adventure, maybe you're daydreaming about that next modeling project that you would love to customize and, and, uh, and make it look different or new or fix something, whatever it is you dream about, keep on daydreaming out there. I'm Justin, your Ragtag Daydreamer, and I'll see you next time.